Chapter 4, Second Invasion The evening continued to darken, and the combination of diamond dust and densely rising fog blocked what little visibility remained. The shockwave's impact had knocked Ava-01 back, but it hadn't fallen into the lake. As ice shards continued to fall, Shinji's Ava stood on the frozen surface of Lake Ashi. Shinji was out of breath, his heart pounding. The flood of endorphins made him feel like he might puke. The sensors in his plug suit detected his agitation. Shinji felt a small jolt of pain in his arm as his eyebrows twitched. A soft resin needle had delivered a sedative straight into his veins. What happened? Shinji panted. The world around him had become frozen and white. Ava-01 did this. What happened to Quatre and her Ava-0.0? I told you to shut up. He'd acted out of embarrassment, wanting to silence her words. What have I done? A loud rumble broke the stillness. A mountain of fallen ice blasted into the air, an arm thrust out, striking the frozen surface of the lake as Quatre's Ava leaped up and rushed towards Ava-01, grasping the giant with one bare hand. Ayanami, number Quatre. Number Quatre, he'd said, not as a name, but as the number she'd been assigned. Misato detested that practice. Don't treat a human being like she's a number, she said. And Shinji felt the same way, or at least he thought he did. But in the moment, on a subconscious level, he'd used the number to separate her from the other Ayanamis. This one was broken. Her Eva was severely damaged. It had lost its shoulder center arrays and propellant system, and its body was misshapen more so than that the impact should have caused. An Ava shape is determined by its pilot's self-identity. The twisted and mangled Ava 0, 0.0 dragged its broken laser cannon in its right hand, attacking Ava 01 with its left. Taken aback by this vicious tenacity, Shinji reflexively asked, Do you want to kill me, number Quatre? The reply came by speaker. It was Quatre's voice. Quatre doesn't want to kill you, Ayanami does. Meaning the girl Shinji's mind attached the name Ayanami to, the one in the high school uniform, the melancholy trois. That can't be. If this is the world you wanted, Kari-kun, then maybe if I kill you. She left the rest unsaid. What does she think will happen? Dropping its AT field and tucking into a roll, Ava-01 nimbly slid across the ice, maneuvering behind the other Ava. Quatre's voice sounded tearful. After all, this world is already ending. Shinji didn't know what she meant, but her words inexplicably pierced him. Had that last part come from Ayanami? I don't understand what you're saying. If Shinji could disconnect the series 0.0, .0 Ava's external S2 engine, its internal power would quickly run out, and the giant would be immobilized. At least, that was Shinji's plan. What? The, the S2 engine was supposed to have been hooked up to the rear-facing umbilical connector, but Quatre's engine had fused directly into the Ava's back. Azuka's Ava-02 crawled from the rubble of the annihilated sniping post on Mount Komagatake, the power source indicator on her entry plug's display flickered between the remote supply and the Ava's internal reserves. <sighs> there must be a malfunction somewhere. It's a miracle the umbilical cable wasn't severed completely. Wait, why is everything white? She'd heard and felt a tremendous rumbling, but the blast had severed her data link, leaving her in the dark about what had happened. The floor jolted and sunk a little and Ava 2s power source switched to internal reserves. The operational time limit began its frantic countdown. Well, now my umbilical cable is severed. Some part of the structure beneath me weakened from the blast must have given way. I need to get out of here fast. When she emerged from the scorched, crumbling building, the first thing she saw was the two Avas battling on the frozen white lake. But then she saw something else. What? The vision was straight out of a nightmare. As ice crystals cascaded down, a dense fog rose from Lake 
Ashi's frozen surface like steam from a boiling pot. The Ava 0.0 and Ava 01 grappled with each other. Then, for an instant, the fog parted and Azuka saw a third giant figure striding across the ice away from the tussling pair and towards Tokyo 3. Where had that one come from? It can't be, she gasped. Shinji! The giant figure was so shocking that briefly her vision and hearing distorted. When she called Shinji's name, she felt as if she were struggling against a great weight. The electromagnetic interference had disappeared, and Ava 02's communication systems finished rebooting. From the command center, Masato's voice reverberated in the plug's LCO. Follow the anti-angel counter-attack sequence. Ready the city's defenses. Target is Unit Quatre. Everyone was focused on Quatre's Ava. But it was the other giant, the one with the familiar shark-like face, that made Azuka start shouting. Shinji, a mass production Ava is here, behind you. Ice crystals flitted through the air as far as she could see, and for a moment, Azuka wondered if the sparkling light had tricked her into seeing a phantom. But no, the white giant really was there. Command Center, this is an emergency. There's a mass production Ava directly between you and Unit 1. Why haven't you noticed? What did she say? Masato yelled. On a normal day, the middle of Lake Ashi was easily visible from Tokyo 3. But Nerve's line of sight and its electronic sensors were blocked by the still collapsing mountains of ice and the rising white fog. The cameras at Mount Komagatake had been destroyed, and the camera at Yamabushi Pass on the western shore was aimed at Ava 01 and the series 0.0 Ava. But when this camera panned to the left, the image of the white giant sent a shockwave of its own through the command center. A wiper arm passed across the camera lens, clearing away the condensation. For a moment, the rising clouds parted, and the creature could be seen lumbering towards the city. Its head rose above the fog, but the rest of its massive body remained shrouded. Misato started barking orders. As of this moment, our objective is to annihilate the mass production Ava, notify the UN and government officials. If Unit Quatre interferes, disable it by any means necessary. Throughout Tokyo 3, the alarm system switched from disaster to combat. It's finally come, Ms. Sato thought, but... The commander called Maya's lab on the main screen. What's the status of the other two orbital AVAs? Their synchrographs are an absolute mess, Maya said. According to our simulations, if they activate now, there's a 96% chance they'll go berserk. Where's Traz? She needs to control them, or else... Ioba answered. The security team brought her to the public shelter in Sector 12. We haven't heard from them since. My precious search and destroy system is unusable. We don't have anything that can fight it, Misato said. We need to hurry in. Hyuga interrupted, his voice uncertain. What's happening? I'm not getting a color pattern. It took Misato a moment to absorb what Keith said. Prepare the armament transport. Wait, what does that mean? We stored the individual DNA patterns of all the mass production Evangelions in our databanks, but I'm not getting a match with any of the patterns we encountered three years ago. Every member of NERV Japan had been searching for SEAL's banished Avas, but none of them had expected one to appear without warning, and so close to home. The giant had come from nowhere, as if rising out of the frozen fog, a monster striding across the ice, indifferent to the events happening around it. That's impossible, Shinji shouted angrily back at Azuka, but his restored data link gave him coordinates and an image, hazy through the showering ice crystals of the white giant. This can't be happening. If that's the mass production Ava's current position, the thing must have walked right past me. I should have noticed. Shinji looked back and forth between the mass production Ava on his display and the series point zero zero Ava in front of him. He grunted as he blocked Ava 0.0's punch with Ava 01's arm, which recoiled upward, leaving his front undefended. During their fight, Quatre's Ava had only been attacking with its left arm, its right hand still clinging to the massive laser cannon. The entire right arm seemed to have been damaged from the shoulder down. 
But now, seizing Shinji's moment of weakness, the arm moved and shattered like so much glass. Was it frozen? Ava 0.0's collapsed into the ice, sheltering its shattered arm beneath its body. A plume of ice dust rose and scattered. The pain from the feedback must have been intolerable. The fallen Ava writhed on the ground, its feet scraping noisily against the ice. Ray Quatre's anguished cry echoed through the Ava speakers. Ayanami, Quatre, don't move. Her wailing was more than he could bear. Shinji turned his attention to the mass production Ava. Easier to deal with that monster than face a friend in pain. Ava-01 turned and vanished into the thick, cold fog. Command, this is Azuka. Send me a weapon. Everything at the sniping post has been melted. Azuka's voice sounded distant through the hydro speaker in Shinji's entry plug. The response didn't please her. We can't do that. The underground rail system is damaged south of Togendai. Damn it. Well, as long as the tunnel hasn't collapsed, I can run through it on my own. There's an exit in Togendai. I can arm myself and get back outside. I want a positron rifle. I don't have much power left. Shinji, say something. Shinji winced. When he replied, his worth tumbled out reluctantly, as if it were making an excuse. Ava 0.0 is disabled on the ice, I think. I'm running across the lake to get in front of the mass production Ava. My Type F has internal weapons. I'll try to stop it. Ava 02 dove into the shaft of the broken elevator. Meanwhile, at an anti-air station not far from the sniping post, every automated artillery cannon that could aim below the horizon swiveled in unison and engaged the mass production Ava. But the extremely low temperature robbed the barrel's special steel of its strength. The motors lost conductivity and couldn't operate smoothly. Several cannons exploded. Shinji-kun, Misato's voice. We're sending up additional armaments with Azuka at Togendai. Regroup with her there. I know we've been trying to find one of these white giant bastards, but if we don't do this properly, the result could be catastrophic. Ava-01 ran through the crystalline mist of Lake Ashi, as if fleeing from Rei Quatre. Soon, his Ava overtook the white giant in the haze. After three years, he'd finally found the enemy. Where did its wings go? And why are its bones sticking out? Confirming visual on the mass production Ava, it's holding a staff-like weapon. The enemy kept on walking, as if it had a purpose. Guided munitions from the city's defense sector soared over the mountains of ice to join the direct attacks from the anti-air station, but the ordnance didn't pack enough punch to slow the mass production Ava's silent strides. Its AT field is blocking the attacks, Shinji said. He opened the front-facing armor plates on his Ava's shoulder pylons. Using the icy mist as cover, he closed in on the mass production Ava and fired two impact bolts. The command center was a flurry of activity. Defense system, cease fire! Shinji-kun, what the hell are you doing? Misato shouted. Don't rush into the targeting area. I need to buy you some time. It's approaching the city. Get a hold of yourself. Misato examined Ava 01's images of the mass production Ava. Something about this monster looks different from before. She called Maya in the laboratory. Are you seeing this? Tell me what you think. If its form has changed, then we should assume that its tactics and fighting abilities have also changed in the last three years. A blindingly bright flash filled the command center's main screen. Ava-01 had fired its impact bolts, which were close-range projectile weapons, unique for now to the Type F Ava's. In front of each shoulder pylon floated a small black orb, a virtual image created by the phase interaction of the AT field and normal space. But the surge of electricity, a product of its difference in potential, was real, and several whip-like bolts of lightning slammed into the target. Still, no effect, Misato said. Is it because of the enemy's AT field? Run the pattern analysis again. Still no match, Hugo said. No color pattern. Could its shield be something other than an AT field? From the laboratory, Maya offered. If there's no pattern, maybe that means the mass production Ava isn't alive. It's an animated corpse. The mass production Avas had been killed by Ava-01 in the battle at Nerve HQ three years prior. Most of their corpses had disappeared before they could be recovered. If that thing is dead, Masato said, then how is it getting power? 
How is it manifesting a shield? Maybe that cocoon inside its ribcage is its core. Maybe, Maya pause. We don't know a single thing about the cocoon. It could be anything. Pattern detected. It's blue, Hugo shouted, and Shinji yelped. What? Masada looked up from a terminal. On the main screen, the mass production Ava's cocoon cracked open. An arm emerged and threw a javelin made of light. Ava-01 raised its left arm to protect the space, and the spear pierced its metal plating. I know that arm. Ava-01's restraint armor shattered when it had been struck, and a sharp agonizing feedback flooded Shinji. But despite this pain, his mind made the connection. That's the arm of Angel Zakyo. He would have recognized it anywhere. After all, it was the first angel he'd faced. How and why is an angel coming out of that cocoon? Ava-01 hopped backward and retrieved the progressive knife from its shoulder pylon. The knife was larger, its blade thicker than the one it had replaced. It was shaped something like a mountaineer's machete. The high frequency vibration of its blade turned the ice crystals that landed on it into wisps of steam. Shinji swung his prog knife. The blade's tip struck the mass production Ava's power shield and went no further. The mass production Ava, carrying its cocoon and the angel within, continued walking in silence. Its one strike had come from Zachul's arm. No attack came from the giant itself. Shinji-kun, Hyuga said, don't provoke it needlessly. Keep collecting data, Shinji said. We need to find the weakness. Is there nothing else I can try? The monster's shield has stopped both impact bolts and the prog knife. But wait. Ava-01 opened the front panel of its shoulder pylons and prepared to fire another round of impact bolts. The two black spheres materialized again, but this time they didn't generate lightning. Instead, they remained in place while Shinji rushed forward and crashed them through the mass production Ava's shield. The floating spheres had been designed to create an intensely powerful difference in electrical potential. They worked by focusing an AT field large enough to shield the Ava's entire body into two single points. Each had a heightened phase differential with the space around it, and now Shinji was smashing them directly into its enemy. I'll tear through you, he shouted. And he did. The black spheres tore through the enemy shield, and Ava-01 pushed its shoulder through the hole. The next instant, Zakyul's arm came flying out to counterattack, but Shinji was expecting it. Come on, that arm is longer than the cocoon is wide. How the hell does it fit inside there? Zakyul's hand flicked open, and the javelin extended out, piercing Ava-01's arm. Shinji gritted his teeth against the pain and grabbed the angel's arm and growled, Come on out! Shinji yanked the angel from its cocoon with all of his strength. He could feel something tearing on the other side. When the arm emerged, Shinji could see that its other end was attached to a small, soft, larva-like body, which still clung to the cocoon. It's not fully formed yet. Shinji felt eyes upon him. The mass production Ava turned its head and looked at him for the first time. The cocoon's carrier, mother, Shinji wondered, swung its arm and struck Ava-01 with its staff. Shinji and his Ava went flying. He screamed in pain. The single strike had broken Ava-01's arm, and the giant crashed into the ice, bouncing to a stop. But the hand that had been holding the prog knife was empty. The blade struck from the cocoon where Shinji believed Zakyo's core to be. He'd sunk it deep. How's that? Shinji shouted. The knife had struck true. The angel's body began to disintegrate from the edges in. I did it! Cheers filled the command center, but the mass production Ava didn't falter in its approach, scattering tiny fragments of the disintegrating Zacule through the cleft of its cocoon. The giant changed course, proceeding towards a new goal. Or did I? Shinji had guessed wrongly, it appeared, that the stillborn angel in the cocoon had been providing power to and maintaining control over the animated corpse of the mass production Ava. A wall of ice blocked the mass production Ava's path ahead. The shockwave from the heavens had shattered more than half of the ice bowl Ava-01 had created in its temporary berserk state. But the remaining ice formed a thick walled dam across the valley, with Tokyo 3 sheltered on the far side. I'll attack again when the mass production Ava stops at the wall. 
but Shinji never got the chance. The Ava didn't stop. It passed straight into the ice. What? The monster didn't break or melt the ice. Nothing shattered. The giant simply disappeared into the wall, as if becoming one with it. Shinji was stunned. I can't let it escape. He brought his Ava to his feet. As he did, the restraint armor split open and fell off its shoulder, perhaps due to the impact that had broken its arm. Unconcerned, Shinji pursued the white giant with his damaged Ava. He opened the remaining shoulder pylons and fired a volley of impact bolts, but the severely low temperature impeded the air's conductivity, and the bolts went wild, striking the ice wall instead. The mass production Ava finished submerging into the ice and vanished. A moment too late, Ava-01 collided with the ice wall in an explosion far larger than the giant itself, but it didn't reach the enemy. Shinji drew his other progressive knife and thrust it into the ice. Each time he struck, the vibrations created a wide burst of shards, but Shinji never felt the blade strike the flesh he sought. Command, I've lost the mass production Ava. I don't know what happened. Shinji, find the way across that ice wall. The longer you delay, the later you'll join Izuka. How's your right arm? Broken, but we can still fight. Damn it. Ava-01 pounded the ice with its good arm. Nothing unusual was supposed to happen today. You should be having dinner with Azuka and Misato-san right now. Damn it, what the hell is going on? This is the world you chose, Ikari-kun. The ice clouds parted behind Ava-01, revealing the series point zero Ava standing there like a ghost. Quatre? Her Ava was changing shape. Its metal shrieked and groaned. Its body was stiffening. Has it gone berserk? And there was the gamma ray laser cannon, fused directly to its upper arm. The launch rail had twisted unnaturally to point directly at Shinji. Nothing unusual was supposed to happen today. I was going to check my email, watch a movie, and go to bed. That was supposed to be it. Ava-01 dodged backward, but the cannon's tip followed and pressed against his outer armor with a distant thud. Save me. Take me back to that time. The nuclear excitement unit is damaged, so there's no way it can fire. This was the last thought of Ikari Shinji in his final moments as a living human being. With the 6-inch diameter and 400 mega electron volts of energy, the gamma ray laser was a dazzling golden light capable of piercing through anything. The fierce beam punched through Ava-01's armor like paper, entered the giant through its side, sliced a notch out of its core and S2 engine, evaporated the entry plug hole, and exited through the back of the neck, hurtling into the heavens.